Hey guys, so TypeScript 2.9 just came out with a new feature that will really help us when doing uh, React Apollo's rendered props. Before you kind of had to hack around to get any type of type information with it, but now there is a great way to do it, and that's what I'm going to be showing you how. So right here I am using the query component, and you might notice there's this weird bit right here, and it almost looks like uh, what you do if you're type uh, giving the type for a React component, right? So you might pass the props in the state right there. And here I'm defining the query. So this is the type information for my query that I want to run. And here are the type information for the variables for this query. And I just pass my query in. And then here's the hello query. And that's it. You now have type information. So like, for example, I know that loading is a Boolean. Or if I hover over data, I can see it's either a hello query or undefined. And we can see that this is a string. So I didn't have to do any type of type annotations to the function itself. It knows now uh, based off of specifying it here. But make sure your editor is using uh, 2.9 uh, or else this will be all red and whatnot. Now this might be enough for some of you guys, but if you have not done TypeScript in Apollo before, you may be wondering where I'm getting the hello query and hello query variables for uh, from and like w how you type your uh, GraphQL. So I have my query here, right? And you can see I have a type of string. So I have to pass it two things. So there's a special library that you can use. Um, it's called Apollo Cogen. And that's what I used in this case to generate them. And that's what I'd recommend uh, for yourself as well. So you're going to want to go ahead and install it. You can either install it globally or uh, inside the project itself. And then the first step is you have your Apollo server, or not your Apollo, your GraphQL server up and running and you introspect the schema for it. So here's how you do that. So we're just going to copy this and uh, you run that. So I'm going to do mpx because I installed it locally and I'm just going to introspect uh, my schema. Now you specify here, they have localhost 8080 slash GraphQL. I have mine just running at localhost 4000, so I'm going to change that. And then I'm going to change the output to be schema.json, or I keep that. So when I run this, it now generates a uh, schema.json file. And what it does is it hits the server and it looks at your schema. So if I click on, you can see it's generated over here. You can see a bunch of different stuff. And basically this is your GraphQL schema turned into a JSON file. And you can see they have type information and whatnot. So what um, this tool does is it takes this schema that we've just created or taken from our server and then it'll generate types based on the queries that you need. So for example, I need type information about this query right here. So to get that, what I do is do the next thing, which is to generate the actual types. Um, I'm going to copy this one because I want to do this with uh, TypeScript. And you can specify the output if you want to. Um, but in this case, if you use modern TypeScript, which is what I'm going to use. so. If you just do target TypeScript, I believe it still does older TypeScript. So make sure you do TS Modern. That'll give you the most recent TypeScript typings. Um, and then you pass it a couple different things. So first off, you pass it the schema. And that is the thing we just generated. So I have it right there. So this is a relative path. So dot slash uh, schema. And then here you tell it to where all your GraphQL files are. Now I didn't actually use any GraphQL files for my queries, right? I just had my query using GQL um, inside of my TypeScript file. So that's fine. What you can do is just change this to uh, .tsx and it'll actually look in your TypeScript files and change that. And since all mine are just in the source directory, I don't need to go this deep. I'm just going to say source slash and look at all the ones in there. So when I run that, it's going to go ahead and create a generated folder automatically. And you can see inside of generated, there's going to be something called hello query.ts. And that's because I called it hello query. And it now has the hello query and the variables for this. Now this would take all your types and create for each query or mutation that you have. 
Um, and just a note about mutations, they work exactly the same way. You can now put the, uh, the typings for the query and the typings for the variables there as well. Another important note, um, you'll see a lot of times, at least when I'm coding, I'll omit the name here. Um, so if you omit the name, it actually does not work. Let's see if I run this, if it fails. Um, and tells us, yep, so you, it says it does not support anonymous operations. So if you get that error, what that means is you don't have a name on your query or mutation. So make sure you do go ahead and add one. So for example, I like to uh, just like copy the name of this, call it uppercase hello query. Um, so it's easy to know, but you can call this whatever you want and that's gonna be the name of your type. So for example, if I just call this Bob, which is a bad name, it's gonna go ahead and take that name and that's what's going to be uh, generated. So I can see now in my generated folder, I have a Bob.ts and I have the query for Bob and the Bob variables. Um, but that's not what I want, right? That's, let's use this name, that's better. So whatever you use um, here, it's gonna be uh, reflected in your types. But yeah, so that is how you can generate types for TypeScript um, with your GraphQL queries. And then also how to use it uh, in the rendered props like so. Um, and remember, this only works with the new TypeScript version, so make sure to upgrade. And then real quick recap of how uh, this stuff works is make a schema uh, from your server. So make sure your server is running and you introspect it. And then take that schema and point it at um, where they can find your queries and then tell it what type of types you want. This also works for Flow, for example, but we're just using TypeScript, so I said TS Modern. And then we can import those types from our generated um, and use them to annotate. Um, and just real quick, lastly, um, I had a little trouble with the default types for Node. So the latest version for types uh, of Node is, I think, 10.3. I had to downgrade to 10.1 because it had trouble with uh, observable. Uh, for some reason. Not sure what's going on there. I think it has to do with probably one of Apollo's packages conflicting. Uh, so if you do have that problem, you can just downgrade your node, but you might not even uh, get this at all. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope that helps and gives you an idea of how you can now get type information with the rendered prop.